everybody. Welcome back to Meals with Marsha. Today I'm going to be making some homemade jelly. Uh, I have some muscadines and I ha already have some muscadine juice ready, but I've got a few muscadines here and I want to show you how we get the juice ready so we make the jelly and then I'll come back and I'll show you how we make it and put it in the jars and everything else. So let's get started. Uh, my mom gave me these musky dimes. I'm not sure who gave them to her, just a friend. I think she had some wild ones that she picked. Now, I've washed these with cold water, and you need to go through them and make sure there's no stems or anything left on them. They're like grapes, and they grow on a vine. Uh, one year, we had a bunch of wild musky dimes in our um, backyard around our wood edge, and it looked like they were growing in the trees. They were so many, and uh, my cousin's... Um, Husband Michael's laughing at me. He's like, musky dimes grow on the vine. I'm like, I realize that, but they look like they're in a bush or on a tree because there's so many. But they do grow on a vine, and they're delicious. I love to just eat them. You kind of have to have a cup on the side to be able to eat them because you have to pop them out of the uh, shell, and then you have to work it around your mouth and then spit the seeds out. But they're delicious. But we're going to get this prepared so we can have some homemade musky dime jelly for this winter. All right, I'm going to show you the stems. Uh, like I said, it's just like a grapevine. Like you just make sure there's none of those stems left on there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer them into this blue bowl, cause this is the one I'm gonna cook them in. And then what you do is once you do that, you uh, pour water over them and then you let them cook. The water has to go all the way over them. Just like that. And we're gonna take them over here to the stove and I'm gonna start them. And then once they get boiling and they start softening up, I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you what we do next to, to mash them up and get them ready to strain. I'll talk to you in a few minutes. Bye-bye. Welcome back, guys. Okay, now I have took my musky dimes and I put them on the stove with my water and I have boiled them. I brought the uh, liquid to a boil and then I boiled them for like 10 to 12 minutes. And as you uh, do that, the, bear, the berries, the musky dimes soften and you can mash them up with this potato masher. And it's really, really hot, and it gets all the the flesh, and it gets the skin, and it gets the uh, seeds out. But you want to mash it up really good. I've been doing that on the stove, and I was just going to show you how I did, how I'm continuing to do that to make sure everything gets mashed up. Make sure there's no whole musky dimes left in there. I don't feel any. You'll be able to tell because once this starts boiling for a few minutes, it really softens up. Now I have to strain it, and this is just a metal bowl. And I'm using a cheesecloth. The cheesecloth is just a really, really thin thing that you can strain things out of. So here we go. This is cheap. You can get this at Walmart in the um, sewing section or you, any place like that, any place that sells fabric. Cheesecloth, it's really good. It's got a lot of uh, stuff that you can do with it. I, when I make my spinach dip, I have to drain, I'll get all the water out of my spinach and I use a cheesecloth to do that. Now. And like I said, it's thinner than a regular dish cloth. Now this may sink all the way down in there, that's fine. But I will pull it out and pull the rest of it out. Let's see how much juice we got. I've already got some juice ready, but like I said, I wanted to do this to show you how to do it so you can get your juice ready. Now, I also wanna say this, if you're making jam, like strawberry jam or blueberry jam or um, blackberry jam, you do not have to do it, process it like this. What you do is you take your berries, you put it in a blender or a food processor, and you puree it up, and you just get your um, your fruit that way. So, like, say if it calls for four cups of blueberries, you would run those through your uh, food processor or blender, and once they're blended up, you would have four cups of berries. That's how you would do that for jam. That's the difference between jelly and jam. Jelly is just the juice of whatever kind of fruit you're using, and jam is the whole thing with, like, pulp and everything. Of course, with uh, musky dimes, you can't do that because they have seeds and they have shells, so you have to strain it. You have to make jelly, cannot make jam, okay? All right, here we go. Now, this might be messy. I'm just gonna pour this into this bowl, and it's probably gonna go all the way down to the bottom, and that's fine. I can pull it out. Okay. And now I'm gonna take this Try to pull it out easy. If it don't come out, then I'll have to kind of have to let it go. And it's hot. Be careful. Can't really do much. It'd be nice if it wasn't hot. You could kind of wring it out, but it would take like a spoon. Get my spoon out here. Press it against the side. Get some more of the juice out. 
It is super duper hot, guys. Be nice to have a strainer. I think I got one. Let me see. I'm gonna set that right back down in there. See if I got my little strainer. I have a bigger one somewhere, I can't find it. But if you had a larger one like this, you could run it through that too, and that would be easier. But just doing the best we can today. Not take a minute. It is gonna take a minute. Let me squeeze it this way with a pot holder. takes a minute to get all that out. You want to get all the juice you can out of that. Like I said, this is not the easiest way to do it, but it's the only way I can do it today because I do not have my large strainer. There it goes. It's going now. be nice if I had a large rubber band I could put around my bowl make it go out that way, but like I said, I'm just doing the best I can here. There we go, we got it down now. Now for my jelly. Okay, there we go. That's most of it out. Let me see what else I got in here. Yeah, that's most all of it. And now you're just left with that pulp in there. So we'll just discard that. Now I'm gonna pour this in here and see how much I have. I need five cups of this juice, this muscadine juice, to make a round of jelly. But I already have some that's been refrigerated. I just wanted, like I said, show you guys how to do this. Let's see how much we've got. It looks like I have got three cups, which is not too bad. So what I'll do with this is I'll cool this and then I will put it in a little container and I will put it in the freezer. It's good in the freezer. Then when I get me another little mess of muscadines, I'll do the same thing and I'll have me enough to make another round. But like I said, I have some already that I've processed uh, like a week or so ago from the ones that mom had and I'm gonna use that to make jelly. But I'm gonna come back in just a minute and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna get all this stuff on the stove and get it ready. Uh, I'll talk to you soon everybody welcome back okay now I have to get my jars in the oven because we're going to get ready to go ahead and process our um, jelly okay now I have got 12 uh, one cup which is half pint jelly jars I've just washed them with hot water and then I've just set them on this pan I'm going to slide them in my oven real quick and I've got my oven set on 250 because we have to have them really hot from when we do these this in here real easy because they slide easy all right and then I have my rims and flats my my lids and my rims and my flats that's what I call them rims and flats I got them on the stove back here on the eye and I've got them on medium and when they start to simmer I'll turn them down to medium low now I also have a measuring cup that I can scoop with and I also got my wide mouth a funnel, which was my grandma Stillman's. I always say that when I'm doing this. I love this thing. It's very important. It helps when you're pouring the stuff into the jar so it won't make a mess. So I have that ready. And I also have my sugar ready because this calls for five cups of the prepared juice, one thing, one box of sure gel, and then you're going to put a pat of butter in there. And I've got that in my buttery. This is to help with the foaming with the jelly. And then I'm going to do that, and once I do that and bring it to a, a good rolling bowl, then I'm going to add my sugar, stir it up, bring it back to a rolling bowl, and boil it for one minute. So let me get that started, and then I'll come back, and I'll show you what it looks like right before we put the sugar in there. So here we go. So we're going to put our juice in, five cups of prepared muscadine juice, which is what we just did in the video before. Okay. And one packet of Sure Gel. Cut that top off. All right, I'm gonna turn my eye on high, okay? Now, this is something you have to stay with it. 
I'm gonna get my little pat of butter to help with the foaming. Get me a wooden spoon. And this is something you gotta stay with, guys, because when it starts uh, going, you gotta stay with it. And that sugar, when you add in there, it will scorch if you don't. And it's gonna go quick, because once that, this gets all dissolved and heated, and that sugar gets in there and it gets back to a rolling boil, it's one minute and then you start. So anyway, that's what we're doing right now. I'm going to get this to a boil, and when I do, I'll come back and I'll show you when I add the sugar. I'll be right back, okay? Okay, guys, we got this going to a rolling boil. Remember, I had a, a rolling boil is when you stir it, and it still boils continually when you stir it. That's a rolling boil. Now, what I'm going to do is I have to get this going, and then I'm going to add my sugar. I have my um, sugar gel in here. I have my juice, and I have my... Um, dollop of um or pat of butter i guess i should say and i brought this to a rolling bowl now i'm going to add my seven cups of sugar and you got to stir fast and then you got to bring it back to another rolling bowl so let me get this stirred up really good get all that incorporated and i'll bring it back to a rolling bowl and then i'll come back and i'll show you uh, what it looks like, and we'll time it for a minute, and then we're gonna take it off, and we're gonna fill our jars. So, see how quickly that goes? It's uh, dissolving that sugar in there. All right, I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, guys, we're back. Now, we're at a rolling bowl. I added my sugar, and this is going really good. A rolling bowl, once again, is still boiling when you stir. So, I'm gonna time it for one minute, and I'm gonna stir. I mean, she's taking off, but this will be good. I'm gonna have us some good jelly. I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit because I don't want it to go too much. Turn it down to medium high, maybe. Stirring continually because this sugar mixture will scorch. There is no doubt about it. Like I said, you just time it one minute and then I'm gonna show you how to fill the jars. Almost there. We love jelly. Usually when I make a round of jelly, we always have some fresh uh, hot buttermilk biscuits so we can try out the fresh jelly. It's so good. I've made a strawberry jam this year and I'm making muscadine jelly. I've made a bunch of strawberry jam, me and my sister-in-law did. I taught her how. And then we're gonna make muscadine and I got enough to make a round of grape jelly. So I'm gonna make some grape this year too. Last year I made blueberry and it was delicious. Blueberry jam that is. All right, that's the one minute. Now I'm gonna take this off the heat. I'm gonna move it over here. I'm gonna turn this off. Now, let's stir it just a second. Get some of that foam down in it. That uh, butter, that pat of butter that you put in there helps with the foam, but sometimes it don't completely take it away. But I've never really skimmed my foam off. I just leave it on there because it's really minimal. So it's up to you what you would like to do. Now I've got my lids hot back here. I'm gonna turn them down a little bit. I gotta get my jars out and I gotta get started filling. Now on this, you're gonna have, I'm gonna get my jars out, but you're gonna have to have a damp cloth to work this because we got sugar in this and you need to have something to be able to wipe the jars off and it's okay to handle them that way. Let me get a um, thing here. I don't know what I do with my pot holders. All right, and be very careful doing this because these are hot and they can slide easily on this pan, so be really, really careful. And once again, I set my oven at 250, so they would be hot. All right, here we go. And I need a fork, let me get that. Okay, here we go. Now I'm gonna start over here. Now I'm gonna fill, I always do a few extra jars. I usually get seven to nine half pints out of a round of this jelly, but I'm just not sure exactly. So what I do is I do extra because you always wanna do extra. You can always decide, hey, I don't need that. I'll cool those off and use them the next time. But if you don't have enough, you're not gonna have a jar that's hot to be able to fill them with. So make sure you have extra jars uh, ready and hot in case. And you have to have your Rims and flats hot as well. So do a few extra. I always do two or three extra, sometimes four. And you wanna leave about an inch to a half an inch headspace 
And what I'll do is I'll fill all these and then I'll go back and if I need to put a little bit in some another one, I will. And so on and so on. Let's see. Okay, that looks good. And this thing right here is the berries so you don't have to worry about making a mess when you're pouring that. It goes in the jar and not all over everything. It means there's some drip on the outside, but you can't you can't prevent everything, but okay. That one. Right. So that's seven. I might get eight or nine. I don't know out of this, guys. We'll see. Okay. Whoop. And I do have some four ounce jars that I usually keep around, but I've used all them up. We've made so much jelly and everything. We've We've just used them up. All right, so let me see what I have in this one. That's another cup, so I'm gonna get one more. So I'm gonna get nine half pints out of a round. That's a good amount, guys. So good thing I, I'm just gonna take and fill these up. The ones that need a little bit. Like I said, you want a half inch head space in there. Now we gotta put the lids on and we have to work pretty quick. But you have to be careful because these are hot. So we're gonna get your get the water out of it. Whoo, hot, hot, hot. Okay. I'm gonna take that right here. You're gonna tighten that lid down as tight as you can now. And we're gonna take it over here and put it upside down on our towel. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I'll show you in a few minutes. Alright, make sure everything's clean on the rim. Take another lid. Put that on there. Use your nap towel. All right, we're going to take it over here and put it upside down on our mat. I'm going to do one more for you guys, and then I'll finish them, and I'll come back and show you how we flip them over. One more for you. Okay, put them on our mat. All right. All right, guys, let me finish filling these and I'll be right back and I'll show you what we do next, okay? Talk to you later. Welcome back, guys. Okay, now I've got all my jars filled. I had nine uh, half pint jars. And uh, I turn them upside down and I leave them like this for about five to 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna turn them over. They're still pretty hot. I'm gonna use my cloth, I think, to do that. Instead of trying to go fast and burn myself. Sometimes I do that if I'm in a hurry, I'll grab a hot jar and go real fast with it. It's probably not the best idea. But we're gonna turn all these over. Now this is muscadine and it's start to finish. I showed you guys in the first session how to get your juice ready strain it off cheesecloth's harder way if you have a strainer that's better as you saw it made a mess but it worked it got it done i got uh three cups but i already had some that i already strained off before i've got to get me a new strainer now these are not see have not sealed if you push them down you can hear them pop that means they're not sealed that's okay because this has got hot liquid it's a hot jar and a hot lid as that cools down it's going to start vacuum and it'll seal it. Now this is some strawberry jam I had made back in the spring. And if you push this jar lid, you can see it does not pop. That means it's sealed and it's good and it's set up. See how it doesn't move in the jar? So that's what we hope for these. Now there is a remedy if these happen not to set on the inside. Sometimes jelly will do that. But um, I've never had any to not set, but I know other people that have. So I've just had really good luck with that. Thank you, Lord because it's hard to have to go back and process them again. But this is it, start to finish, guys, how to make homemade musky dime jelly. And like I said, I, if you wanna do grape, you can do the same thing with your grapes. Get those ready, same amount, five cups of grapes, or the juice, I'm sorry, with uh, seven cups sugar and your sure gel, and just go by the directions on that sure gel box. You gotta do the juice with the sure gel and the pat of butter, Bring it to a rolling bowl, add your cup, seven cups of sugar. Bring that back to your rolling bowl, have your jars hot in the oven, your lids and flats hot on the stove, 
and then you do them just like we did, pour them in, turn them upside down, seal them, and you let them stay. Now, I'm gonna cover them with a cloth because I want them to finish sealing. Now, this is this is something my mom done and my mama did, and we always just covered them and we left them alone. You just leave them alone until they're completely cool. I won't mess with these until probably tomorrow morning sometime or the afternoon. I will write the date on them and I will write what, what is in, inside the jar and then I will store them away. I always save my box. Let me show you this. I have another dozen jars over here. I always save my little jelly jar boxes because you can stack them right back in there. And it's great, like if you've canned a lot and you need space, you can just put them back in your box and then just stack those boxes right on top of each other. So, all right, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like my YouTube channel, Meals with Marsha, share this and let me know what you think. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.